This week on Ahoy. Reason you need to keep your van lightweight. Yeah, I, I've got type 1 diabetes, which means I've got a license restriction. Come over to see me and explained that you was getting canvas units. I laughed. And when you turned up and showed it to me, I stopped laughing immediately. Beautiful, like, chunky framework. Uh, what I love about these is the finishing, the welding's like top, top. Absolutely. Top. In terms of finding someone that would take on the challenge of this, because this is just, I feel for a lot of people, a headache. I've had a bit, I've had a journey. Welcome to episode one and part one of Van Build Stories. This year, I wanted to do something a little bit different and bring in some interviews to help share knowledge in a slightly different way. In this episode, we speak to John, a successful student property developer who's got a unique issue that could affect a lot of van builders and moto home owners. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the interviews lined up this year with van pros and van owners. And the latest updates on novel new products, including the much requested Clayton Power add-on batteries. What do you do for a living? I own a student accommodation company in Liverpool. Property mogul, then, is that the way? Uh, guru, I'd like <laughs> guru. to think. Property guru, sounds better. So why are you building a van? Well, my, um, my interest in building a van uh, stems from ha uh, having defenders for many years with roof tents. Lots of adventures, lots of trips overseas and festivals and all sorts of things. And realised that actually climbing up onto the roof of a Defender wasn't uh, wasn't for me anymore. And uh, thought that the camper uh, or an adventure van is, uh, is the way forward. Why particularly this platform? Once I decided on a camper, I realised it would need to be a fairly large van. Um, and actually, because um, i am sort of always been into Land Rovers and 4x4s and off-roading and overlanding and all of that kind of stuff, it really had to be a 4x4 van, which of course limits it right down to either the Sprinter or, uh, or a Crafter or a, or a TGE 4x4. And then it was a case of what is available and having called around and looked online, I realised that actually there was virtually nothing available. What is your feeling on the kind of duality of this platform? So it's a crafter, but with different badges on. I kind of prefer that I've got something that's not one of those, um, but clearly it has all the same function, all the same technology, all the same capability. There's actually a reason you need to keep your van lightweight. Yeah, I, I've got type 1 diabetes, which means I've got a license restriction. I did have C1 use, um, which most people have, or a lot of people have. Um, so uh, a slightly overweight adventure van, camper van, isn't a problem to them, uh, but I need to keep my, my build as lightweight as possible. And so my ultimate goal with this project build um, is to achieve um, a weight, uh, what I call a dry weight, of about 3.3 tonnes. But yes. you actually want to come less. Well, I do that. because it's uh, obviously three and a half tonne is, is gross weight. So that's pe people, supplies, fuel, liquids. The van, when it was supplied new um, with lots of factory options and also the cycle off-road uh, equipment supplied by Volkstrek. Um, the weight is around 2.6, 2.7. So I've got sort of six or 700 kilograms to work with. Did you find doing the, the research easy or did you come up against a lot of obstacles? Well, I would say overall, it hasn't been too difficult, but the amount of information out there and the forums and people's different views on things. Clearly the conventional way to build um, a van like this is um, primarily with plywood panels of some kind. And I realized that to keep the weight down, I was gonna have to find something a bit different. So originally when I bought the van and was gonna do pretty much what everybody else does, uh, looked at Evo Design, looked at um, what other companies were doing, and realized that I was gonna to struggle to get it within the weight that I need. So yeah, uh, the panels in the end I found quite easily. Um, company in Leeds, uh, Lathams, um, they supply the advanced plastics. In terms of finding someone that would take on the challenge of this, because this is just, I feel for a lot of people, a headache that they'll just ignore. How have you found, because the guys genuinely seem G'd up in terms of doing this, yeah. a one-off. Well, uh, I think I've had a bit. I've had a journey with the guys at Black Rock. I first uh, called them uh, 
about six months ago, summer 23, and uh, had, a, had a fairly long meeting where I kind of presented my, uh, my vision for this van, including some of these novel materials. Let's just talk a little bit about some of the decisions within the, the, the actual build itself. Obviously you went with the Clayton, uh, we had a massive discussion around the weight saving and all uh, and I've done loads of stuff on Clayton so we don't need to do too much on that. But the, the actual other things that started to interest me, we're looking at hopefully selling Van der Moon kit uh, this year. One of the things I found with Van der Moon is the quality doesn't come across online until you actually touch and feel it in person. I quite agree. Um, I decided I needed a lightweight um, overhead locker solution and there are one or two out there. There's some stuff in the, in, in the States, um, but actually the Van der Moon uh, boxes, overhead boxes, locker, lockers, they're not soft, they're actually rigid. Made of some really clever stuff, uh, the nylon um, with some aluminium framing and some, some hollow plastics again. Your van, your base van, is really high spec and obviously you've mentioned there you got it off uh, Robert Volkstrap. First off, what does it drive like with it on? What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, uh, the van's fantastic. It, it's a high spec van from the factory. So all the sort of things that you would need to add to an adventure van conversion. As many of those items that are available from the factory were spec'd by, by Rob. They always come high spec um, with all of those parts, windows, swivel seats, auxiliary diesel heater. This van was already built by him, ready to go. Um, with all of the cycle equipment, so the suspension kit, uh, the lift kit, the, the snorkel um, and all the underbody protection. But actually because of my need to keep the weight down, I actually had all the plates removed. So um, I might go back, if I have the capacity to go back and have some of those things refitted, I, I will in due course. So it drives superbly. Uh, I haven't driven a non 4x4 with the cycle uh, suspension kit so I've got nothing to compare it to but it's an easy drive and although it's a big van and it's a long van and I did have some concerns and reservations when I bought it literally within days I was driving it around you just got to make sure that you uh, make space for uh, for the extended length in the in the in the supermarket car park so you've got a high spec van you've got four before automatic you've got the top spec engine Yep, it's diff got lock. A diff lock as well. You've had a full sequel kit on there. Even the base van, you're like full out as the top spec van you could possibly possibly get. What do you think about this platform versus the Sprinter? Because that I, if I was going to have a a different van, it would it would be the Sprinter. There's not many options, so there's, there's either that or that's or... right. Yeah, and I did look at the Sprinter, but when I realised Sprinters were pretty much unavailable and no orders were being taken, I just discounted that straight away. And, and you've gone for the 14 litre electric Truma water. Yeah, well water the van tank. the van came with the auxiliary diesel heater, nice. uh, which is which which works fantastically well. So I don't need an additional heating solution but I do need hot water and I've decided to go for yeah, yeah, the lightweight Truma um, electro boiler. It's a 14 litre tank. Um, but again, with everything on a, on a van, you've got to manage your supplies. So um, yes, it, you know, that runs off the mains, but then the Clayton system will be perfectly adequate. You know, it's a 3000 uh, watt version. Um, plus an add-on battery when those batteries are available, which when will hopefully available. be soon. Hopefully um, March. Hopefully so I March. should end up with, um, I think, about 480 amp hours of, yeah. uh, of power. Um, plus, of course, solar and, you know, so it is an off-grid kit. It's an off-grid adventure van build. Now, I remember when we had this conversation about the 14-litre um, Truma uh, electric water container. And I know I did a video where I did a really stupid video going out and wash, washing the dogs, but actually utilizing the spare energy that you get when you're driving, uh, there's a little bit of foresight because you've got to turn your, turn your water on while you're driving, use that energy. And then when you're parked up, you're not, not using it. 
But the reality is, even without the additional batteries, if you ever need it, you can just turn your engine on and, and put that on for 20 minutes while you're warming Absolutely. the water up. Yeah, that's quite right. And of course, 14 litres isn't a lot of hot water, but when you've mixed it for a shower, it's going to last a lot longer. Do you feel building this way has made it more expensive? Or you've gone with uh, Sean's mule uh, kit, the alley kit on the back, which yeah. looks amazing. I always love the van. Well, that's another weight saving. You know, I had to go with the with the aluminium kit. Do you feel it's added extra cost then building in this way? Has it been some materials have saved money, some have put on money? How has it worked out? Well, I don't think, um, fortunately, I haven't been on a particularly tight budget and I've really tried to buy the best products for the job, driven mostly by this the need to, to get the lightweight stuff. I've never done one of these builds before, so I can't compare it to having something perhaps more conventional built. Um, you know, everything's adding up for sure. But if I get exactly what I have in my head as the finished product and the right finishes, then I'll be really happy with, you know, spending the extra and getting ex exactly what I want. So we're gonna do a follow-up video and you're gonna actually weigh the van. Yes. We'll get the certificate. And that's what yes. I am super interested to see how it comes out. Cause I think the weight saving you're making on this, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Do you feel there's much emphasis from leisure part manufacturers on weight? Do you feel this just sits within the realm of the adventure vans and the extreme vans versus the general leisure industry? Well, I think what's interesting, having done all the research on all the products to try and find the lightest and looking at other converters and also the companies that do their own versions of vans. So they're not customizers like these guys, but they actually produce, you know, a handful of models with a, with a fixed specification. I never see reference to weights. I think the general understanding, talking to people like you and lots of others on the forums, listening to what everyone's saying, most builds seem to go over the three and a half ton. But I guess for a lot of people that doesn't matter because they've got the license to, to cover it. If you've got a C1, then you're, then you're okay. And then there's the whole conversation about getting your van replated at the, at the higher weight, but most people don't seem to do that. Yeah, it's become a bit of an obsession for me, really, the whole lightweight thing. And what I'm hoping to do with this video, working with you, Mark, is um, really to just showcase what is possible. Uh, but we won't actually know what's possible till the end and we work out whether it's been a success and we've achieved the weight savings. One of the things I see in the forums all the time, and the Crafter Man TG forum that's run by Martin and the guys is brilliant, by the way. Yeah, um, I'm on that yeah. uh, every, all, every day, picking up loads of useful information. Everyone's really helpful, that's so, so good. I see loads about people worrying about the miles per gallon effect of the 4 before tires. The reality is putting the tires and wheels on, because I did that at the start, makes very little difference to the MPG. When I started putting stuff in the van and the weight started to creep up. So it's a funny thing that people are putting all this stuff in the van. They're not really that bothered about the weight saving of any materials that they're putting in the van. Yep. Yet they're umming and ahhing whether they're going to put off-road wheels on or not doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, I can't compare it because again, this is the uh, the first big van and certainly four by four van with off-road tires. You've gone for an awning. Yep. Which I don't know what the weight is on them. Do you know, have you, do you know off the top of your head what the uh, weight's an awning? I think it's about 30K. Right. So it's not too bad. It's probably a little bit less than I thought it would be. Because yeah. you've got the, you've got a big, a big old. Yeah, it's a four meter, so it's the it's the full length. But again, you know, these are the things that uh, I'm not willing to compromise on. Yeah. So there's things that you you know you want on the van that I re you know that that you need on the van really. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Where I've where I've been able to save weight, I yeah. I have tried to, yeah. um, but with certain things, you know, they they are going to be on the van. So yep. this is the nine mil. It is. Yeah. So and that feels. That I mean the rigidity of that. I'm yeah. quite surprised that. I mean, that's that feels solid and it weighs nothing. No, that's right. Um, I, I believe that this is uh, at least uh, half the weight of a comparable uh, ply board of the same thickness. Um, so this will be used for um, the furniture. So the kitchen unit, the bathroom unit, um, the fridge unit, 
and also to line the garage. Um, so this comes in some different shades. So I've got a variety of sort of greys and some black. Uh, there's also a version that comes with um, a sort of a sandpaper finish called X-Grip and that's going to replace the 20 mil uh, ply floor, which mm. I calculated to be around 75 kilograms. And for the nine mil X-Grip plastic panel version, about 28, 29 kilograms. Right. So basically you've got this, this three different types of material really. So you've got the nine mil, which can have the, as you say, it's got the, the sort of sandpaper type finish, or this is like a, call it like a stippled sort of yeah, finish. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, so that, that is, that as I say, that is really rigid. I would, you'd struggle to bend that by hand. Like with what I've done with the LVT in the van, this could be submerged in water, it would never rot nothing would ever go wrong no. with it. Well, that's the other thing about this van is there won't, there won't be any wooden elements or any ply elements, nothing yeah. at all. So packers and joints and anything that needs, um, you know, some further sort of material added or bonded yeah. will be um, will be cut-offs and surplus yeah. bits of, of, the, um, of the panel material. So really minimising any timber. Yeah. And then, so any of the structural elements is, is going to be the extruded... Uh, what do you call it? Like the X aluminium, whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, aluminium extrusion for yeah. the uh, for the bed frame. So sixty by thirty. Yeah. Um, with side rails and then um, extra uh, bed components. Yeah. Um, with with this material actually as a bed base, which will be routed, perforated. Yeah. Uh, uh, to to yeah. make sure you get air. Yeah, air, yeah. air so going that's going to be used for the raised bed at the rear and also for the pop top bed to go over the the roof ribs just yeah. to le level that out and then there's some other uh it's the same it's the same product uh, but the there's a thinner version so that's sort of a four mil yeah. which again is lighter it 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 is still, it is still. more flexible but good for the wall paneling and also the ceiling yeah uh panel so the ceiling panel will be um, the four mil, but it will be, it'll have a vinyl wrap with mm. a sort of a, a, a contour finish yeah. just to give it sort of a bit of interest. And also yeah. it's white because a lot of the other paneling and the van itself, of course, is either sort of a gray or a black. Um, so, so that, so that if, in, interestingly on the ceilings, it looks great. You've had it vinyl wrap with a, with a sort of, um, topography sort of pattern on there. You, what was the maximum length in this sheets? Cause you've had to butt it together, haven't you? Yeah. I think it's three meters. Right. The, the, these, these different uh, materials do come in different sizes. Some are restricted to smaller yeah. sizes, but you can still use them for furniture, but for larger areas like the floor and the ceiling, there are going to be joins. Yeah. But I don't see that's shouldn't be a problem. So you've got the, the nine mil, the four mil, you've got four mil bonded as well. Yeah, that was just me experimenting actually, just with spray adhesive, just to see what um, the t two layers of the four mil, how strong that would be. Yeah. Um, and it's it's reasonably, but I think bonded with some proper, some proper um, uh, material, some proper product uh, mm -hmm. would, would work better. Because there's going to be, areas in the van where you're gonna to have to double up on this yeah on i this. think i think obviously on the joints and also where i want sort of you know maybe like cargo nets yeah and you've got to put fixings in um we'll need to have it uh, doubled up and then the final product is uh, is the lining for the bathroom which is a foamex so this is lightweight but it's got um, a gloss finish so the idea for the bathroom is actually that the foamex board for the inside of the bathroom will be bonded to the nine mil material which mm -hmm. will be on the outside and then using aluminium extrusion corners uh, which are which accept a sort of a 15 mil board so if it was ply it would be a standard sort of 15 mil board so we can achieve a 15 mil board by by bonding the two together Got which you. is going yeah. to be phenomenally strong yeah well. yeah 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 so the challenge again we, we've it's been mentioned is uh getting everything bonded together uh fixing screwing st screwing things together mm -hmm. um but uh, that i think that's where uh, that's where some novel ideas will come in i think the thing that you're going to go for as well and i like this in a lot lot of builds and uh it's like with ape uh, for example th this starts to his build his builds are beautiful they but are. there's a 
there's a sort of trend towards more utilitarian type um, materials now as well, especially with the sort of adventure vans and what have you, uh, in actually embracing the fact that you show off the way it's made a little bit more. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And especially with like the aluminium, extruded aluminium, it, it act, does have a sort of utilitarian beauty to it as well. So you, not, you don't need to hit, hide it, you can show it. So it's going to be interesting to see your build finished where it does have some of that finishing on. Yeah, I mean, uh, as well as the objective of trying to build a, a lightweight van here, an adventure van, is that uh, the look I'm going for is very utilitarian. So there's nothing really very fancy. Mm. It's all fairly subdued colours as well as obviously the advanced materials that we're using. Um, there will be some splashes of colour. Yeah. Um, possibly a red red table and a red kitchen worktop just to put a splash of colour in there but nearly yeah. everything else is kind of greys and, and blacks but certainly yeah very utilitarian and I'm hoping uh, that we'll achieve the weight and that with these panels we should be saving 50% on all the pan panel materials. Van der Moon, right. Van der Moon. So when you come over to see me and explained that you was getting canvas units I, in my head, I, I laughed, I'll be honest yeah. with you. And when you turned up and showed it to me, I stopped laughing immediately. Now, again, Ape uh, do these, and I was shocked at how good the quality is. Um, yeah. Now, I know they are a little bit pricey, but what you've got to bear in mind is that these are fully built. It's Again, as, as I say, I love the plug and play uh, type products and brands. And this fits squarely in that. Um, yeah. I spotted you on the forums. I know another one of my customers actually that bought Clayton was asking about the profile and how well they fit. All these products um, are made for the different vans, aren't they? So yes. they're made for the different profiles. Yeah, in, yeah. I mean, interestingly with these, um, on the Vandermoon website, it's not obvious that these are made with the additional angle here yeah. which actually then fits perfectly into the, uh, the the structure of the van and the where the extra sort of yeah. um, rib elements are here at the back so that is actually a perfect fit yeah yeah and in terms of quality I mean it's absolutely phenomenal they're yeah. not they're not cheap uh, clearly but um, you know the, the work is done and and it looks like a lot of time has gone into achieving this quality uh, with you know workmanship so I'm really happy, and um, this is the smaller one actually that's going to be going into the kitchen, just inside the sliding door here. And then I've got uh, some um, some that are about 100, 120 centimeters, uh, one for sort of over the seating area, one mm. for for the back. So more than twice the size of this. But um, you know, again, I think uh, no. In fact, I'm not even going to say what that is because um, I think. Does seven kilograms sound about right? Yeah, probably about right. Possibly. Yeah. It's, it's very, yeah. I mean, I, and, I, 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 um, built, I built my Evo kits and, and had to hold them and put them in. Yeah. I, I, they're heavy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though they're built lightweight, but that, that is incredibly but lightweight. They're, but they're removable as well. Obviously, you need cargo rails to f fix them in. Um, yeah. But with the extra pockets on the, the bottom and the front, they're just, just a fantastic yeah. bit of kit. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video reviewing these uh, as we uh, look to be selling them uh, and talking a little bit more more about them in, in detail. But yeah, just an awesome bit of kit, Un unbelievable. Um, and as I get, as I say, that kind of very utilitarian adventure van. It reminds me of like uh, motorbike panniers and yeah, like that type yeah, of thing. It's yeah. just it's that it's that type yeah. of thing. I mean, I think they'll look look, look great with, with all this other stuff. You know, the the the, the paneling and the finish on the paneling, yeah. um, and the floor. Are these Max tracks? Uh, well, well, I think actually they they're, poss they're possibly a copy, but right. these are going to be mounted on the um, on the box on the back. Yeah. Um, along with some other bits of kit, perhaps we. Uh, Go and have a, a look. Right, let's go, and have, let's go and have Shall a look at your that? mule carriers because I yep. absolutely love them. So you've got the wheel carrier, which has the ladder built in. Yep. Beautiful, like, chunky framework. Seen a lot of these when I was at um, MBT uh, and I've seen a few customers turn up with them on. 
is the finishing, the welding's like top, top Absolutely, notch. phenomenal. Top notch. Yeah, really, really good quality. Uh, and Sean, actually, I don't know what, whether people do or don't know, but Sean used to do at, like custom motorcycles and things like that. He was at that for years, wasn't he? And like really, really high-end craftsmanship. So you've got the wheel carrier, and then is this, so this is the... That is what they call the safari carrier, yeah. which uh, gives options for what you might want to have fitted on. Yeah. So storage box is one option, but you can have cycle carriers or ski carriers. Yeah. Um, or or brackets for anything else, jerry yeah. cans and the yeah. like. Uh, but the storage box really for me was an, an, an essential. Um, I mean, the fact is all of this stuff's made of aluminium, so it's, it's the lightest option. Yeah. So again, it had to be mule, you know, fantastic kit. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, but for me, you wanted the box because all the sort of the peripheral camping gear, you know, the hoses, the cables, um, the chocks, you know, and all of that kind of bits, bits and pieces that you need as soon as you set up camp, that will all be in the back here. Yeah. Um, so it's all easily accessible. So on the top of here, you're going to go with what? Jerry can? Uh, there'll be a double jerry can holder on the top uh, water and, and diesel. Uh, sand ladders are going to go on here, which will then actually extend to about here. So that'll sort of all look nice and tidy. Yeah. And then some rubber fists to, you know, be able to clamp spade, axe, all those kind of useful bits yeah. of kit when you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I know I always get, I've got the axe in the back of my van when you open it and everyone says what you use the axe for and it's just chopping wood. I don't know what the th people think I'm up to with an axe, but <laughs> yeah. it's just one of them. It's, and also yeah. it just looks good, which I think yes. sometimes with, with some of the stuff, we, you just put stuff on there because you are trying to create that off-road look. Some of it's really practical and, and how you use it, but also some of it's just purely purely for luck. And yeah, I think yeah. like, like there's no there's no uh, sort of avoiding that. Really. No, no. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on here that, you know, most converters or, or you know, customizers are going to want to fit to their to their vans. Um, and the van's only just been delivered here for, for conversion over the next couple of months. So I've sort of been around and, you know, sort of put l labels on the van where everything should be going so you know there's there's things to add all the way around well after all that the drive home from liverpool had me curious i'll be honest i'm absolutely shit myself because i have saved weight in some areas but not others so this is going to be interesting if the camera doesn't fall over Got... oh really right is that definitely right? Am I on it? Oh, lovely. Thank you. Have a top day. See you later. Bye. Oh, don't you just love that when people are nice like that? So it's over. Hello? Hello? Where are you? Uh, it was a little bit longer. I've just been to get the van weighed. Go on. What do you think? We've got, obviously, I'm all right. We've got, I've got granddad rights. You have as well. Um, so it's not that important to us, but just out of interest, obviously, anyone on it. <laughs> well, yeah, I give that away a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> Stay tuned for part two, where I weigh everything in my van and realise there's a lot of things that are quite heavy that I didn't need. And learn the process to take if your van is overweight.